One's two, three, Oscar one. when we arrive on scene uh, our highest qualified paramedic will go and assess the patient first and do a rapid trauma survey to see exactly what injuries they can quickly um, see they'll also then do a head to toe, head -to -toe survey um, and see exactly what uh, what is presenting them uh, and make a decision in terms of what assessments or treatment they need to start giving. If the patient is stable then they can just immobilize the patient and get them into the ambulance and to hospital as fast as possible or do they need to intervene and do advanced life support techniques in order to stabilize the patient before transporting them. We work in a team so when it's myself and an ambulance crew it will be three people um, and we'll work together. The one would get vital signs, the other one would start getting the necessary immobilization or equipment ready to get the patient to our ambulance. And then normally I take over some clinical things. So I'll assess the patient, look at what's going on, and then make my decision as to what's going on and what my treatment's gonna be on scene. And uh, my plan forward with the patient with regards to am I gonna transport him quickly or I'm gonna uh, treat him on scene and get him stable and then take him to hospital or he's, the pathology that he's presenting with is so serious that I can't deal with it on scene uh, at that stage and that rapid transport might be better. Kasim Baisa is my name. Uh, I'm a shift manager at uh, Ekuruleni Emergency Services. My name is William Ndladi. I am the media spokesperson of Ekuruleni Disaster and Emergency Management Services. Finding the places in time is a vital important thing but we never get there if we don't get the right address from the caller we can't get there in time so that's one of the big challenges <laughs> Anyone that we can try and phone? Um, I know my sister's number. Okay, what's your sister's number? Hold on, hold on, hold on. When a patient is conscious, they offer their help to call their loved ones and let them know of where they are taking him or her with a calm and a willing heart. During the rush hours, people knocking off work, there is a long traffic around north side of Johannesburg. The accident happens when a van ran into a bike and the bike driver fell down and his ankles were broken. When the paramedics arrive on the scene, they quickly mix up the injection medicine to ease up the pain. The communication is best. They work together. Their number one priority is the patient. When the other one is busy on the injection, the other one ties up the bed. Unity is what they are. Our guys can jump in an ambulance, drive the ambulance, treat the patients. They can also jump onto the fire truck and do what's done, the rescues, everything. Thank you so much.
much, so I really appreciate it. Eh? Yeah, okay, it's it's right. Right. It's one, two, three, Oscar one. At night, less accidents happen other than weekends. Sometimes they are extremely close to attend at night till sunset. Sometimes one accident being attended. The city of Johannesburg emergency firefighters cooperate with the paramedics. They make sure they don't get lost at each other. They should arrive all on time. on what the situation is. On car accidents, um, if, if it's multi-casualty, things like that, uh, you use a process, process of triage, scale the patients in categories of, uh, you know, seriousness. My personal thing is, is I don't really look patients in the eye. Um, I obviously assess the eyes, and then, but while I treat them, I don't look them in the eye. Uh, it's just a way that I don't remember patients. And we also have uh, two hour availability uh, trauma counsellors 24 hours a day uh, that's intended just for us so then you can obviously seek psychological help from professionals. There may be different companies of emergencies but when they arrive on the scene they work together, help each other, assist one another and become one because the aim is to make sure the lives of the victims are helped. Definitely get counselling yeah. Uh, we see counsellors on a regular basis or the guys who are dealing with the grief after dealing with such serious and critical patients. In this case, a truck drove straight to a vehicle that was driven by a grandmother, which the firefighter needed to cut the door on her right hand side in order to reach out to her. The paramedics had to treat her inside the car before getting her into an ambulance. The van damaged her ear, eye, arms on the right hand side and broke her spinal cord. She was quickly rushed into the hospital. And as a firefighter, you start with your firefighter one and uh, hazardous material awareness. Barricade, they can call the necessary help that's needed to attend to that scene. The rescues. You can also do all the rescues. A hot zone is where it's all happening. That's where the truck is. In the cold zone, that's where everybody will be. Your, your medics, your medical officers will sit on a cold zone because uh, they are sitting there waiting for patients that are coming from the hot zone. Begazela is astonished by one of their members, Madamadi, dragged by a truck to death. Zodwa, known as Madamadi, was one of the people living in a poor environment, surviving by begging for food and money on the streets. The paramedics and police arrived on the scene, finding out that she immediately died when the truck dragged her. Paramedic had nothing to do to help as they could have helped while she was breathing. But now the work is left for the forensic company to take the body to the mortuary and the ambulance to attend another incident. As Madame Adi's soul was no longer, the police attended till the forensic people arrived. In the city of Johannesburg, lots of accidents happened. 
We waited, waited, and waited for almost three hours for the body to be picked up. The forensic company had already attended accidents where their car got full by dead bodies. They had to go and refill at the mortuary, then to proceed to come and pick up Matamati's body. The family community of the victims got shocked, confused, and worried on how to deal with such incident while the victim is the breadwinner. This is what a sister or a friend had to say. Finally it arrives. The van carries four dead bodies and they were busy on this day. The necessary documents were issued for the police to verify that they will be taking the body into a certain place. Matamati's blood flew as soon as they picked her up. and strength to pick up the bodies and they did their job. The living condition was not in a good state. It left them shocked. Nobody knows the day or time he or she dies.
Matamati's friends, sisters, colleagues had to pour the soil to close the blood in remembrance of Matamati. Don't on the scene, it's Bo, uh, Ravonia and Kelvin. That's Ravonia and Kelvin. Ravonia and Kelvin. Bonia and Kelvin. Please, there's an update on the scene. It's Bo, uh, Ravonia and Kelvin. That's Ravonia and Kelvin. <laughs> I'm speaking on behalf of Disaster Department of Ekuruleni together with the Emergency Services of Ekuruleni. We are covering the bigger spectrum of emergencies around it depending on the magnitude of the incident itself. We do have uh, also some uh, brave firefighters uh, in, our, in our department. I will mention one like Mike Kahlo, uh, whereby he managed to, to, to assist and to help people uh, during the exchange, uh, shooting exchange that took place on an attempted robbery in uh, Waiteville some time back. We approached the intersection, they were well prepared, they spotted us and uh, yeah, they were determined. There was a couple of people that had been shot. Um, at that stage I didn't know who was who and when I was approaching the scene there was three gentlemen that had been shot. Um, they were obviously dead. So I went past them to further up the road. I could feel that I was losing power. I was losing concentration at that moment. I went to Quinton and Quinton said, no, I must go and help you all. Mike stopped and he first went to Quinton. I'm okay, I've been stopped. Sure. He called me on my name because we also know each other. And I told him, listen, I'm dying. I can remember you all saying to me, I'm going to die. And I said, well, today is not your day. You're not going to die. I'm going to try and help you. And we managed to get him stabilized as much as I could. We organized for the police helicopter to land on scene because they were really circling the scene. I was in a coma. I only woke up after a week. I couldn't believe because now I could see that I'm in a hospital. He came to me, I think it was on a Saturday, you know, I just started crying and I just said, thank you, Mike, thank you. It took a long time for me to really believe that, uh, you know, I'm alive. I'm still here. So what he did actually was very brave and it shows that now he's a man of his character. And as a result, uh, he was also nominated as uh, uh, the hero of Ekuruleni uh, in the competition that was uh, conducted by Centrum Guardian in uh, 2015. And what happened is, by so, by so doing, he managed to save the lives of those particular uh, motorists. What happened is, uh, after the shooting has stopped, he managed to enter into the scene. We call it the hot zone. So where the actual incident was taking place. So people were lying on the floor with a lot of cartridges, you know, that was basically not knowing what, cut, what other ammunition did those particular uh, hijackers had in their vehicle. But he managed to, to save uh, the, the lives of uh, the Metro Police officers by also communicating with the other uh, life-saving paramedics who came on site to come and give him a backup. So that shows that now if we can have such people within emergency services, we can basically uh, be able to save lots of lives. <laughs>